What's up, everybody? I know it's nighttime, and I just want to do like this short video to give you some encouragement. Um, mostly, I'll probably still up in a way, but I just want to give you some encouragement. So, I just wrote a post by rejection. And in this post, I was talking about, you know, writing a letter to rejection. And this letter just talking about these, the things that rejection, you know, costs us, the things that rejection, you know, tells us, and how we need to stand up against it and start saying that, hey, I am somebody. I belong to God. I have a future. Because today I had more like a revelation in a way that rejection is costing me some things in life. Um... Two of those things I can just tell you on this video. Um, one, of, the first thing is um, my grad work. Um, I started grad school last year, and after you know I finished my first year of grad school in the summertime this past summer, and I can just tell you that I did not do so well. And one of the reasons why is because I downed myself the whole time, you know, I was in school. Um, I told myself I couldn't get the work, or you know. My professors didn't like me, which was not the truth. You know, I was just having all these suspicions about things. You Okay, you're not going to make it. You're not going to make a good grade. And even when I get a good grade or something, it just shocks me like, how do I make a good grade? Uh, you know, really not following my schedule, not trying to sit down and just read the word, but just downing myself before I even got started. And that cost me. That cost my GPA. Um, that cost me you know, some things that, you know, I wanted to learn in some of my classes, classes that I had to drop. Um, I had to retake some things. Um, so now I'm in the process of trying to get back, you know, into my program because I allow rejection to talk to me. My second example is that at work, you know, my supervisor was leaving his position and I didn't apply for it because I thought they wasn't going to give it to me. And I was already dealing with all these suspicions about people at my job, you know, just in my head. And I was kind of like walking, you know, in those lies and say, okay, they don't like me. I shouldn't say nothing. I'm not going to do it. And then to find out today when my boss say, hey, why you didn't apply for it? And I was like, well, I don't know. I really thought that she didn't want me to do it. I didn't tell him that, but I was going off the last rejection was telling me, telling me that I wasn't a nobody, telling me that nobody really doesn't like me here or nobody's not going to do this and that. And I'm not saying that, you know, you're not going to have people on your job that doesn't like you. I mean, you are going to have people in your job that don't like you, that don't really want to see you do well. But rejection will just tell you these lies anyway. Um... And even have another coworker encourage me, you know, why you didn't go after it. And, you know, I started to feel bad because I allow my emotions, I allow rejection to really talk me out of blessings. Uh, it was a blessing for me to go back to grad school. You know, it's a blessing to get, you know, a higher position. But while I'm learning from these situations, you know, first, not to get self-pity, but to learn that I cannot go around thinking low about myself no more. I can't keep doing it. I can't keep acting like that, you know, I can't do certain things or, you know, just acting with no confidence at all because God made me a wonderful creation. And here's the thing about God, what I love about God is that he wants us to overcome things. He don't want us to just stay in self-pity or stay in rejection or stay in depression. I don't want to learn how to cope with depression. I don't want to keep taking pills to try to deal with it. I don't want to cope with rejection. I don't want to cope with suicidal thoughts. I don't want to cope with that. I want to overcome it because God has so much for me. And even though God planned these things out for us, we still have a choice. We can talk ourselves out of blessings. We can talk ourselves out of jobs. We can talk ourselves out of great marriages. We can talk ourselves out of it. And rejection really is aggressive because it just wants to claim your life. Um, rejection wants to rule your life. You know, rejection don't want you to go back to school uh, so you can get a higher, you know, just a higher position. Um, so you can start building your confidence up. Rejection don't want you to do better. Rejection wants you to stay in the same old, low mindset that you can't do this. It's everybody's fault that you can't do that. Nobody likes you. Nobody cares about you. It wants you to live less a reckless it wants you to live a reckless life. And I want to encourage you to not allow rejection to rule your life. Um, 
So I don't know if anybody, you know, out there can relate to this, you know, how we just, you know, we lost certain jobs or we lost certain opportunities. We missed certain opportunities because of suspicions that we believe because we allow rejection to tell us that we wasn't, you know, good enough or we just had low self-esteem. But I want to encourage you to start right now and saying that, hey, rejection, I'm not going to allow you to rule my life. You're not about to destroy my life. And it just, you know, it just really just, you know, hits me in the heart that sometimes we really do down ourselves, you know, too much and for and too long. Um, just really just think about what happened today is that, you know, I did not have to think of, you know, I didn't have to think like that. I could have went to God and prayed and said, hey, do I need to take this job? Or I could have went to God and said, hey, you know, this time I'm feeling that work. Is this really true? You know, God wants to help us. We don't have to just sit there and just have this full-blown conversation rejection and say, okay, I'm going to apply for this job. You think I should apply for this job? Yeah, you're right. You know, I'm not confident. You know, I think I should be with a say, man, somebody that's going to treat me right. You think I should? Nah, well, nah, I think you should. Um, because, you know, I have a child. Okay, I shouldn't go after it. You know, I should still, you know, think low. Maybe I don't need to get married. Or maybe I don't need to, you know, pursue better. Or maybe I don't need to uh, trust God in this area. You know, rejection will really talk you out of some things. And I really just want you to take time out and to even look at your own life and look at some areas you allow, you know, to hold yourself back because of your your lack of confidence or because low self esteem because of lies. Even sometimes we allow past issues to rule our life. Don't allow rejection to haunt you another day. Break out the friendship. Um like I said, you can, you know, read the blog post you want to. You can just say that, you know, you can read that letter to yourself or read out loud you know, to yourself before you go to bed and make that declaration that, hey, I am going to be the person God made me to be. You know, don't allow, you know, rejection to rule your life. And also, one last thing I want to say, you know, go to God. Um, I know sometimes, you know, therapy is nothing wrong with getting counseling. It's nothing wrong with seeking help. But God is the ultimate chain breaker. He knows how to break out spirit of rejection. All you have to do is just really just start reading this word. Keep pinning it back over to yourself. Really press into God's presence. Really talk to him about your issues. God cares. You know, he really does care about our lives. So talk to him about it. You know, get free from it because honestly, I'm just telling you the truth. God wants you to be free from it. He don't want you to bow down to his side. He wants you to be free. He wants you to be happy. He got so much great things for you guys. If you could just sit back and imagine how God, you know, made your life to be, how he wants you to walk in certain things and do certain, you know, just do not certain things, but doing great things. You know, guys, don't allow rejection to stop that because the devil's ultimate goal is to kill you and it just erase you out the faces of it because he know if you live and get delivered, he know how many people are going to be set free by your testimony. So keep pushing forward. Have a great night. I love y'all. Bye.